Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. Now, today I'm going to be talking about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, which is sort of a game that is popular and people do know about, but it's not as big as something as, you know, Mario Party or Animal Crossing, and it's not really a game people are really talking about, I feel. And I feel like more people should be talking about it. We are getting a huge, and I mean huge, game here for Switch. It is about 13 gig, I mean, it's huge as in file size, but it's also big in terms of content, I feel. It's every Marvel property. Now, you know, when we see Marvel movies and we think of Marvel, we think of individual properties. We think of Spider-Man, then we think of Avengers, and then from there we think of Iron Man, Hulk, Captain America. Uh, we may also think of X-Men, Captain Marvel, other characters in the uh, MCU. And, you know, we all think, okay, they're different They're different sort of properties, but they all sort of fit under the Marvel brand. And, you know, if we get a Marvel game, it will maybe be an Avengers game, or maybe it will be a Spider-Man game, or maybe a push, maybe an a X-Men game exclusively. However, with Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, it is every Marvel character. It does look amazing. And, you know, it is that hack and slash, similar to Hyrule Warriors, Dynasty Warriors, Fire Emblem Warriors, similar to the Warriors games, hack and slash fun thing. And it has online, and you can join online, and people can play, and you can join your friends, and it's it, it just blows my mind. I mean, I'm looking at the game now, and just it blows my mind how good this game is looking. I mean, just look at that original trailer they showed off at the Game Awards. It looks amazing. I love the reveal. It's like Marvel, the big logo appears. Um, we see... Uh, Nebula, and then the Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy, another property that is is going to be a part of this. Every single Marvel character is not just, a, not just an Avengers game, which I love. Nothing against the Avengers, I think that property is great, but I think it's great how every single Marvel character is here. And, you know, graphically, it doesn't look really hyper-realistic, but I think it looks good. And I think in portable mode, it's going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing. Um, I love sort of the style of it. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but it's not sort of a kiddie design. Hulk looks amazing. Look at that Spider-Man there. Um, I believe that's a Sandman uh, boss battle we're seeing there. I don't know. Uh, it does look very, very cool. Uh, that is some of the, the cutscenes there. Uh, you can see there Wolverine. Another boss fight there. It does look very, very cool. It does look really, really impressive. Um, again, I wouldn't say the game looks bad. Green Goblin there at the end. Um, I wouldn't say it looks bad. I think it's got its own unique style. Uh, in a similar sort of way to Zelda has a, um, a similar sort of style. Zelda doesn't look bad, um, doesn't look hyper-realistic either. It's got its own unique style, and I think it does look very, very good. And then we end with this massive shot with every single character there. It does look truly amazing, and it is amazing also that it is exclusive to Switch. Now, we've sort of seen a lot of things that are exclusive to Switch. Um, you know, for example, we've seen... Uh, oh, there's Thanos at the end. Uh, for example, we've seen things like... Um, that was the RPG um, that came out last year. Oh, what was the name of that one? Um, Octopath Traveler. I forgot the name of that one because I wasn't personally interested into it. I'm not a massive fan of JRPGs. And, you know, this might be seen as an RPG, but I feel like the, the property that it is based off, Marvel, I'm already interested in. I see all the movies. It, it does seem amazing. Now, um, I'm just really, really excited for this game. That's, that's basically what this video is. It's me just talking about this game. It does look very, very good. But... Uh, another point I want to make, and I kind of just touched on this a minute ago, but I want to kind of bring it up again. Um, it says in the description of that announcement trailer, play online, offline, in local wireless, or simply pass a Joy-Con controller to a friend so they can join your team. With another player, pair of Joy-Con controllers sold separately, four players can team up on one system in drop-in and drop-out possibilities and create their own Ultimate Alliance at will. Now, we don't know how in-depth this online is. We could have a case of what Mario Party has done. For example, Mario Party, if you don't know, um, launched in October the 5th of last year. And, you know, it's head on, it's head online in the trailer. And we were thinking, you know, maybe we can play Mario Party boards or at least maybe play the mini games. And, you know, that, that game launched, Mario Party launched, and, you know, I, I personally thought it was pretty good. But, you know, other people thought it was a little bit disappointing. Uh, but Mario Party launched and it turns out that online could only play five mini games. Five mini games. And it was like, why can't we just play all 80? Or at least play some, you know, stuff, more stuff, you know? I, it didn't make any sense why you couldn't do a full board online. So um, that's my only concern for this game. Is it going to be a little separate mini game thing that isn't really the full game? Or can we actually play the story mode? Um, here's, here's another trailer that they've released. 
um, does look very, very impressive. Um, the characters have their own unique style, as I've said, uh, and I sort of think, yeah, they do look good, um, you know, far away, but when you really zoom in, you can see these characters are pretty detailed, and, you know, here's, here's the trailer now that shows off that, that online play. It does look very, very impressive. Uh, but again, I'm not 100% sure what it is. I think this is going to be more story mode driven, uh, which I don't mind. I don't mind. And I, it appears to be from some of the cutscenes we've seen that we go around the Marvel villains, which is also a very, very impressive thing. Um, if you if you any if you know anything about um, the films or the movies or whatever you want to call them, um, each film seems to be only one villain, and you know maybe next movie we'll go on to a different villain. Um, this is going to be very, very cool to sort of go through all of the villains. And this, this you know. Is sort of reminding me um, a lot of um, the Lego Marvel games where it was sort of the fight to get these stones. I think we're seeing like a battle mode right now. That was kind of teased there, that trailer. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just, I'm just waffling on about this game because it does look so good. And it's appealing to me who hasn't played the other two Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. I've never played them. I've always wanted to play them, um, but you know they've never been on a Nintendo system, and this is another thing that makes this game really like wow. It's on a Nintendo system, is that you know first time in ten years you know since Marvel Ultimate Alliance two, and now on a Nintendo system exclusively, exclusively, and as big as Marvel is, Marvel is making so much money right now with all its films. You would think oh if we're gonna make a game we're gonna make it for everybody. This would have e this would have cost a lot of money. For Nintendo to do for to do this, Marvel, Marvel, you know it, it's not like it's a smaller company to have exclusivity. Marvel, it looks amazing. It looks amazing, and it's just it just looks amazing. I I keep going on about it. I keep talking about games, and I think right now the Switch is being amazing at announcing games. My only problem with the Switch is they're announcing games and saying 2019 and slowly telling us when they're actually coming out. That's my only problem with Nintendo, but I'll make another video on that. Uh, that being my only problem with Nintendo is that they're announcing games and going, look at this cool product, it's coming this year, and then saying nothing else. You know, maybe, and I hope I'm wrong by E3, and I hope we do know more after E3, um, which I'd imagine we will. I'd imagine we will, honestly. I think we'll see more at E3, and they'll go, Animal Crossing, release date. Luigi Mansion, release date. Town, release date. Pokemon Sword and Shield, release date. Zelda Link Awakening, release date. What else is coming out? Uh, Mario and Sonic, release date. And just go bang, 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 bang. But that leaves the question. Nintendo always has a direct after E3 as well. Around September, November... September... So, you know, early September to early November is sort of the margin. We'll get probably another direct after E3. And that's when it's like, what are we starting to talk about there? Are we starting to show off more information about games that haven't come out yet? Maybe Sword and Shield, maybe Zelda, maybe Animal Crossing? Or are we talking about 2020 games? And I know that's far ahead, 2020, but you know, I don't know. But anyway, back to Marvel. I feel like we could see another trailer at E3. I feel like we could see another trailer at E3. Um, mainly going over the story of it. Um, I know that there's um, a lot of trailers focusing on gameplay. Uh, there was a trailer that's just released about X-Men, uh, which does look very good. And I feel like we need one on stories, uh, story mode, and then maybe one just before launch, going through all the features, maybe showing us a menu, other stuff. And, you know, if Nintendo really, really wanted to push this game, they could show it off at Treehouse. Now, if you don't know what Treehouse is, it's a thing that they do at E3 where they show off live games, uh, and they show off the games being played. Uh, I'd imagine this year's Treehouse will probably feature Mario Maker 2, uh, this, hopefully, Marvel, um, maybe Pokemon, well, I say maybe, most likely Pokemon Sword and Shield. We had um, Sun and Moon shown off at Treehouse. Uh, maybe Animal Crossing, maybe Luigi's Mansion. Uh, probably, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe Luigi's Mansion was probably pretty more, pretty likely because we've already seen gameplay for that. Uh, maybe some Zelda, I don't know. I'm, I'm very, very excited for E3, and I'm going to be getting some E3 videos out in the next couple of weeks. On the build-up to E3, I think we're only a couple of weeks away, so very, very, very exciting time. Um, oh, you know, this is sort of off-topic, but last thing I want to say, Marvel's really good, but one thing I want to say is um, Crash Team Racing. I'm a little bit concerned on that. I want to make a video on that. Maybe we'll see that Treehouse. I don't know. I'm excited for Marvel. Let me know all your thoughts on the Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 game. It does look very good. I'll be streaming it 
throughout some of the streams. So that's going to be good. And um, yeah, that's really it. Let me know all your thoughts on Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Are you going to get the game or are you not? Are you wanting to know more before you decide on the purchase? Do you hate Marvel? Do you love Marvel? Let me know all your thoughts and I'll see you in another video.